All right, from uh, Iowa City West High, we'll move a little bit further west. Um, oh, further here. west sorry. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, four and two Grinnell at four and two Clear Creek. This looks like a good matchup on paper. Um, Wyatt Hunter leads the state with 1,521 rushing yards and 23 touchdowns. And keep in mind, this isn't the normal ninth week yeah. of the season. <laughs> this is the seventh week of the season for right. them. So put those numbers in perspective. Uh, averaging 493 total yards a game, the Tigers are 45, 44 and a half points, 320 rest, rushing yards. Ryan, sounds like the Clear Creek defense has its work cut out for it. This is this is the game that I plan to be at. Um, we have for picking the first week to do this, Rob, and we talked about this for a while. You know, we had to get it going. We had it in the works, but right. we have great. We have some really interesting games this week. You know, when you throw in the City Liberty again, Kennedy and or Kennedy and in West, two really good programs, but th I'm really excited to watch this game. I'm excited to watch Wyatt Hunter. Like, you know, he had a game with uh, 453 yards rushing and seven touchdowns. So it's like you hear that and you're like, okay, I kind of want to see this kid, whether he's on the Western side of the state or whatever. And when I, when I saw there playing Clear Creek, I'm like, all right, like, and he's a big physical kid, but man, their offensive numbers, <laughs> Rob, so I went, and I'm, as I'm doing my prep, I'm like, all right, I got to go through Hunter's numbers, you know, and see per game uh -huh. as he's doing what he's done. And he's gone 165 yards, 228, 246, 453, 221, 208 to get to his, you know, 1,500 yards. But as I was looking at that, I was like, man, I got to look at their, their total yard, or their rushing totals. I was looking at their rushing totals, and I thought – I thought it was their total yardage. So I'm looking, it's like 196, 319, 306, 525, 295, 280. I'm going, wow, that's really good. They're averaging like 320 yards a game. Like that's pretty good for a high school team. It's their, it's their rushing average. And they're also, I mean, a lot of those games, they, their first three games, they threw it for over 200 yards too. So they're averaging, yeah, almost 500 yards of offense a game, 44 and a half points. And then you throw in, what we talked about last on Monday for our seven nation pod about how much we both like watching the clear Creek offense. Like this has fireworks. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just really excited. This is maybe as been as exciting. And I love a good, you know, three to two game as much as the next guy, Rob, no, you don't. A, a good 10 to seven, <laughs> 14 to 10. Like, I don't well, mind as a watching. Photographer, them. that's not cool. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of ball between the hash marks, and you just shooting piles and piles of people over and over and over again. But yes. I got this, another Ryan that Clear Creek is up for this though. You look at those, you know, you're if you're a defense, if you're a competitor, yeah, you're the state's leading rusher coming to town with an explosive offense. As a defense, you're like, let's have it, bring it on. No, absolutely. And that's what I was going to, I was going to get, that's what I was going to say. If you, as a coach, I feel like when you have a really good back, you're like, well, he might as well have 2000 yards. Something that will really get people's attention. Right. right. Because, and, and I mean, they're going to need it. They're going to need to be fully locked in on him and this offense. We, I think we mentioned it the other day, you know, former West coach, Brian Souser is the, is the coach at Grinnell. They are really good on offense. And I'm in, in, I mean, they're a good team. You know, they're, they lost last week. Their, their two losses are to Cedar Rapids Xavier and Harlan. Yeah. And if you follow 3A football in this state, yep. if you follow football in this state, I mean, again, you talk about gold standards in yep. this class for going back a long, long time. I mean, those are two of the premier programs in any class. So those are their two losses. And even in those losses, they put up 462 yards in that loss to Harlan and you know, 310 last week against Xavier. And Hunter rushed for, you know, 165 and 208 and five touchdowns in those games. So this one, like I said, Video don't overanalyze what you're looking at in the Kennedy game. This is going to be who has who, – who, who can get a couple stops and maybe who has the ball last, right? I mean, there are going to be points scored in this game. And maybe you're looking at maybe turnovers, you know, who can get off the, who can get off the field in some third downs. And then what can – what can uh, – Clear Creek do against Hunter. I mean, I haven't seen him. I know they've got a big offensive line. Um, Dodge Souser, I think he plays center for them, but he's an interior lineman. He's an Iowa State commit. They're going to they're gonna come at him. 
and I like Clear Creek's defense. I mean, I've, you know, we've talked about it. They've got some really they, – they really get to the football. T.J. Bowlers, obviously, is a, is a difference maker on the defensive line. you got to account for him. So, yeah, let's, let's kick this thing off. We could play this tonight. Like, I just – I really am. Like, I'm, I'm really excited to just see how this plays out. I know that's terrible analysis, right, to just be like, hey, I'm excited to watch him score a bunch of points. But I can't wait to watch this game. One thing I was going to ask you, and I apologize to the listeners and viewers for not knowing the young man's name, but they, there was a transfer in from Illinois for Clear Creek Amana who was ruled ineligible after, and I'm not going to go get on a soapbox here about, you know, how this has been handled by the state so far this year. Um, he missed last week, was his first week out. Am I right, Ryan? And, and is, are they in a process of appealing? Where, where are we at with that? And for because idiot me what's his name um i'm i'm looking right now because i know i'm gonna um i just have so many things written down and i know that i'm gonna say his first name i'm gonna say i'm gonna give him the wrong first name which is which i really mark mark gorbatenko um yeah he's last week was the first week that, uh, sorry i had to look that up because I, I i just felt like you're gonna put me on the spot i'm gonna say the wrong i apologize I we, we kind of no, went, we, it popped into my head and i'm figuring people would want to want to know about it right um yeah he was a defensive end um offensive tackle for them um, i i don't want to what's that big kid i went out and shot photos he's he you he, yeah. he, he, you notice him right away yeah he's he's a really impressive looking looking player i mean you know like his like physically like he yeah. he he you want him getting off the bus first right him right <laughs> behind bolt right behind uh, tj bowlers like you pull up and you park right next to the stadium and have those two guys walk out first um no he, i don't know where they're at in that process you know so i don't want to i don't want to talk about it or if they're you know i mean what they're doing but okay it's just and again we don't need to discuss go into that too but there was you know, several kids throughout the state or more than several that, that came in um, to play football in Iowa this year and and they were they were recently ruled ineligible, I guess, if we're if we're updating people if somehow somebody doesn't know. Um, I think it's just know. screwy, Ryan, because you had kids that were ineligible at the beginning of the season that are now eligible and kids that were eligible at the beginning of the season that are now They're, ineligible. It just doesn't right. seem to be much rhyme or reason to all this. And I think that's what's confusing for people. I mean, know that I don't know the scenarios, the situations. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and there's there's definitely stories on both sides, et cetera. But it's just it's kind of a it's a it's a jumbled situation in a in a jumbled year, right? I mean, it's like when you look at everything that's going on. But unfortunate, like I'll just put it like unfortunate for all these kids. You know how I am. Like I don't say that as like a oh you know. It's like I love watching kids have the opportunity to play high school sports you know, look at what we're doing, look at what we're talking about. So it's like, you'd like to be able to see those kids, see those kids play, you know, and that's not do, to do what's disparage best the kids. state in their decision, but you obviously want kids to have the opportunity to play. So. Exactly. Do what's best for the kids, but you also have to follow rules. I get all that. We'll right. move on. We won't get up on our soapbox there to get people <laughs> mad at us. 